I'm super stoked for the reverie though. Like, what, what do you think is gonna happen? Do you, do you even care? Man, fuck the reverie. We going to Wano. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Drum Island, the original Drum Island, right? Of course, with the mention of King Riku, Elizabello, uh, King of Protonus, he's gonna be there as well. And he's actually traveling um, with King Riku, and of course, they've been escorted by Leo and those boys. So that is gonna be interesting, and everything that happens around that conversation. Now, Dalton is gonna be there as well, the uh, Sakura Kingdom, and he's gonna have an interaction with Wapple. So I'm interested to see how that happens and how that goes down, because Wapple, he doesn't play nice, and he had an interaction with Vivi um, in the past when they had the previous reverie. So I'm interested to see how he goes about that, because Kreha, she's gonna be there as well. It's gonna be a huge mixture of characters where we're gonna have a lot of information to get from all these characters. There are even characters that we have not seen before that are gonna be there. And the referee, the referee picture that I, I mentioned before that was trending, it doesn't do it justice because it's over 50 countries and their leaders. So for this, the, that referee, it didn't show nearly uh, the, the number of participants that should be there, I think. But for this one, it's gonna be packed, it's gonna be dense, it's gonna be tense, and we have a lot to look forward to in regards to that conversation and the information around everything that's gonna happen there. So that's something I really can't wait to see. So with this, Cobra and Vivi, it's, it's really interesting here with their story because, of course, Vivi and her, her affiliations as well as Cobra's, Cobra's like pertinent questions. Now, in One Piece chapter 823, Cobra said that come hell or high water, he's going to ask the question about the poneglyphs like Chaka referenced to him. And this is something interesting because this is not something that the world government wants to talk about. This is something that happened during the Void Century. It's like information there that's hidden from Cobra and his family. Now, Cobra is also interested in what the Nefletari family and everything they did back then like what did they do because if you guys remember it's 20 founding kingdoms right and 19 kingdoms chose to live in marajoa and one decided not to do so and that's the nefletari family that's cobra's family so he wants to know what happened i want to know the story behind all of this tell me what happened that's not gonna go over well for him especially with his sickness and his health right now i'm not sure if that's a question he wants to ask there because it may be off with his head like right after the reverie or even at the goddamn reverie i'm not sure how i feel about uh cobra and i don't think he's actually leaving leaving the reverie alive. It's interesting and the information that's gonna come from that and the, the possible repercussions, how can you not look forward to that fucking hype? And in regards to Vivi, Cobra also mentions that he wants to find Vivi a suitor. There's gonna be a lot of royal people there. He wants to find her a suitor. Now, initially, I was thinking that the world government, based on Cobra's question, Vivi may get like assigned a husband because Cobra may get taken out. He's still the king. And if you take out the king, could they assign a new king or assign a prince to marry Vivi to become the king? That's a separate video in itself because it's some it's moving parts there. But with Cobra in this question, Oda didn't throw out the suitor thing for no reason. Of course, we're saying Koza should be with Vivi, but it's gonna be some conflict there. <laughs> This is another that's been discussed like crazy just because of everything that stemmed from Fujitora's whole conversation um, in Dressrosa. So Fujitora, he does not like the fact that the world government has Shichibukai. So his one of his goals was to tear down that entire system. Now, a lot of people have been speculating that Fujitora is going to show up at the Reverie and announce like, yo, everything that's happened here, we have to tear down this system. But my question is for Fujitor, for you to replace something as valuable or as seen as valuable by the world government, such as the Shichibukai system, you have to have something to replace it. And Fujitora, as far as we know, he does not have anything to replace it. Now with his question, it could lead to an answer from someone else. He could ask for them to abolish the Shichibukai system and someone else may step up and say, hey, I have something that can replace that. My first thought is the actual pacifistas and I don't think Vegapunk is gonna be there, but probably a representative that wants to be abreast of like everything that's going on may say, hey, Vegapunk just got finished completing these new world pacifistas. I made a video on that recently on another channel. I may make, I don't know, redo that video and make it on this channel or just um, transfer the video to this channel. I I'm not sure yet, but New World Pacifistas, Pacifistas that can stand up to most pirates out there. When I say New World Pacifistas, I mean Pacifistas with the use of built with sea stone and using like different forms of um, elements, not just the Kizaru light. So they may have something already to replace that whole system, but Fujitora, I believe Joy Boy said this, said this one time in a stream and I, I think I agree with him that Fujitora doesn't have to do anything. And of course, he's already banned from any um, marine base. And Marajora, that's not a marine base, so that's an exception there. He could show up there. But I think he has other goals and aspirations to follow Luffy. And to, I don't know, he, I think he has things he wants to accomplish. He saw the opportunity to kind of defect temporarily. And he probably knows how it kind of is. He kind of goaded him um, or baited him into doing that in a way. Where it's like, you know, 
you have to catch them or you can't come back. So now he can move around freely and do whatever he wants to do. Back to what Joy Boy had implied or said that with the Shichibukai system, it's already crumbling. There's already two families, at least there, two royals that can attest to the trouble that is the Shichibukai with the Nefertari family with Crocodile and the Riku family with Doflamingo. I'm not sure if Doflamingo is doing anything wrong because he took back a country that was originally his. So that's that. These were two major incidents that happened. Of course, one was like broadcasted to the world with Fujitora and Prostrate and everything that he did. Um, but it, but it, nothing really stemmed from that. But I think that is going to create the conversation around everything that's going to go on there because now now they have to look at it saying yo these countries are saying they're being fucked up by these people that been put that we have to kind of maintain this balance but they're contributing to messing up this balance so therefore we have to look at different ways to kind of supplement uh the loss of the super guy again the pacifistas or there could be another way they did just have a military draft right maybe you establish a new battalion or a new crew a new group with the strongest vice admirals that you felt were in competition to become Admiral and you established like rogue Marines or something like that, that could be a replacement for the Shichibukai. Of course, they, or you have another military draft. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but there has to be with a supplement that before you do this. Another thing could be that Akainu does not give a fuck. He's like, I don't want the balance. I want to be the balance. I want to give her the Yonko, Shichibukai, every single pirate. And of course, the indication of that is moving the base to the new world. I kind of may have different plans. I'm interested to see how that plays out. So that whole conversation with Fujitora, I absolutely cannot wait for that. Another amazing thing that has to be discussed here because this kid has been wreaking havoc throughout the pirate world. Luffy has had several incidents that has been egregious to say the least. Of course, Punching the Celestial Dragon is viewed like that's just absolutely just taboo. That's what the fucking word is. Along with burning the flag and challenging the world government, the entire world government, breaking into Impel Down and basically releasing all the prisoners, the level six prisoners that were there, defeating the Shichibukai, which one could say that was a good thing, but no, he, take, he took down uh, basically an operative or a uh, vendor of the world government. And of course him being a pirate um, and his bounty has skyrocketed to half a billion half a million. Luffy is a problem and Luffy has to be discussed. Of course, his father and his grandfather, that attributes to his overall danger. And you have to reference his crew as well and who was on his crew. He has Robin, someone who can read the Poneglyphs on his crew. If this conversation happens after the Cobra Poneglyph conversation, then it's like, whoa, we're in murky territory here. They're going to discuss the Poneglyphs or discuss Luffy after discussing the Poneglyphs. Say they reveal what the Poneglyphs are. Not to us, but to everyone there, saying this is what it is, tells the Void Sentry, tells different things, blah, blah, blah. They reveal that. Then they let them know that Monkey D. Luffy, this pirate that has rose to prominence, who his dad is, who his grandfather is, and having someone from Ohara still alive that can actually read the Poneglyphs on his crew. And if word comes in at that moment that Luffy, hey, breaking news, Luffy just broke into Whole Cake Island, defeated Big Mom's third commander and her first command solo that's that's that's, that's gonna be he did a solo now we have to kind of say what do we do here then it kind of made reference to say i already done something i have personally assigned an admiral to his capture that may be the supplement to that entire thing where i've personally already assigned an admiral to his capture and not only him his affiliate in law that entire conversation is going to be even more interesting because remember i reference vivi and her being a straw hat an unconfirmed and unofficial straw hat, she's gonna have a say in this conversation where it's like, wait, hold up, let's go back to Alabasta. He defeated Crocodile. Crocodile was oppressing us. He was the reason for the problems in Alabasta. Let's go to Dress Rosa. King Riku, Leo. Everything that he did in Dress Rosa helped the country. And your own Marine Admiral acknowledged this. Those two wins or those two good things cannot make up for the things that Luffy has done. He's directly challenged the world government. There's no forgiving that. He punched a celestial dragon. And you know, they have a lot of sway and they hold a lot of weight at these functions. I didn't even mention the war of the best at Marineford and his part he played there. He basically broke out a prisoner. He was showcased at that war. He got out of that alive again. So that conversation is going to be amazing because you're going to have people arguing for him, arguing against him, 
and you're gonna have people just dead in the middle what's wrong and what's right i absolutely cannot wait for that to play out because that's gonna be spec spectacular and of course there's theories out there that luffy may be at the reverie i never thought that <laughs> and i absolutely don't think that now unless kuma comes out of nowhere he's like yeah reverie unless that happens no way no way luffy's on his way to wano and the reverie is going to take place while he's on his way to wano <laughs> this is the main thing that i wanted to talk about or that everyone's been talking about that's going to happen at the reverie because it's the prime time for this to happen and this guy again luffy's father because if luffy's conversation happens right before then they transition to dragon oh my god but the thing here is not the, just a conversation around dragon but let's go back let's go back a little bit and this is what cobra was kind of scolding wapple about because wapple didn't give a fuck he's like yo dragon isn't affecting me but they were saying that yo in four to five years this guy dragon he's gonna be a problem and at this point dragon is a fucking problem the revolutionaries are a problem the revolutionaries are a problem from our perspective the revolutionaries aren't really a problem because they're doing good things for the people or assumingly i mean everything they've done has been good so far but for the world government when you're in power and you have a, a, a force directly opposing what you're trying to do saying that you're not doing your job good enough we're basically rebels trying to uprise and take over because we're better for the people that is a problem this guy has been doing this and has not been caught of course they had that hiccup when i say hiccup i'm using that jokingly with uh, I'm thinking Weevil, but it's Burgess. Wee! Burgess stumbled upon Baltigo, and then he alerted his guys, and then Blackbeard showed up, and then apparently it was a whole battle, and, you know, CP0 showed up. It was like a whole entire thing. My theory is that Dragon called CP0 or alerted CP0 on fucking Blackbeard on them. There's no way Dragon did not know this. You did not evade... You do not evade the world government for this long, and then you tell me that Burgess stumbles upon your territory? No fucking way. So for me, I don't think Dragon really shows up at the Reverie. Maybe a hologram or Denden Mushi is brought in, right? And is given to whoever's um, hosting the event, right? Who's running the event and doing all that. And Dragon has an epic speech. I plan on uploading a video where I write a speech of what I think Dragon is going to say. A requiem of the things to come. I expect that from Dragon, but not actual physical harm to anyone at the Reverie. It just doesn't make sense. However, you may strike all these kingdoms while the head is not there. You make your move and let them know while you guys are discussing the possible affairs of what we're doing, we're making moves here. While you guys sit atop your perch, atop your throne, talking about nonsensical things that doesn't really affect the people, but affects you, now's my time to move. Of course, there are good kings there, they're good leaders there, like Riku, like Cobra. They're good people there, but then you have people like Steli and Wapu. Remember I referenced Steli and said Steli could have a association with the uh, revolutionaries? And of course, his relationship with Sabo. So Steli was uh, Sabo's younger brother, I mean adopted, whatever, but his younger brother, they may have an interaction there where maybe if, Sha if Sabo actually shows up. Because if anything, Sabo would show up and not Dragon. Of course, Sabo's not fighting, say a Marine Admiral is there. Say Green Bull shows up and Green Bull is actually there. Sabo, I don't think Sabo's beating an admiral right now, but I don't think an admiral is actually just overpowering Sabo easily. When we saw Sabo at Baltigo, he was training. So Sabo is po more powerful than we saw him at Dressrosa at this point. So is he close to admiral level? I think so. I, don't, I think he's right hand commander level right now. Right now, I think he's right hand commander level or more, where an admiral is not. It's not a cakewalk for an animal to take him down. So he may show up. Of course, he can fly, show up, deliver the Denden Mushi while being covert, him and uh, Koala, and just dip out of there. So, so many plot points, so many amazing things that I think is going to happen. What's your favorite one? Of course, number five, the information dump that's going to happen. Number four, the Cobra and Vivi conversation that would be amazing number three fujitora's plan and everything that's gonna go on around that and that could stem from that number two the luffy conversation that's inevitable that we absolutely have to have and number one the main event dragon and discussion of dragon where he's come from where he is now what can we do to stave him off again the reverie it has the i guess the the makings to be an amazing arc a great arc so much information there to be had. So guys, let me know what you're look for, looking forward to the most. I laid mine out. Let me know yours. But for now, let's actually get into some questions.
that I wanted to answer as well. Okay, so this question is by Mr. Shore Shot. He said, I do question if getting rid of the Shichibukai is a good thing for the Marines because I agree, Fujitora, that you don't know what these pirates will be doing undercover or behind the scenes and they're just using their position to get access to more dangerous events. The actions of Crocodile, Black Bin, and Doflamingo prove this, but at the same time with the system abolished, the Marines stand a chance. The Admirals are powerful in their own right and they have a bunch of men in the Marines, but again, quality over quantity. The Marines may get enough men for an entire country, but that doesn't mean they have the quality of men for future battles with Luffy or Blackbeard. I agree there, and I talked about that with my whole Fujitora conversation, where they could have a group that's already established, or they have the New World Pacifistas. But I 100% agree, like, getting rid of the Shichibukai system right now it doesn't look like a good thing, but overall, you have to agree that the spectrum of it, and the, um, I guess, the effects of the Shichibukai, it's uh, a net negative, right? Because they are going around, and they have their own goals, they're doing their own thing, and they do whatever they want to do under the world government's banner. So I agree with you, but I think they'll be fine without a Shichibukai if they have a system in place already. Boogie Ball says, watch my man Big News Morgan walks into the middle of the reverie and, tell everyone, and tells everyone what Luffy, Luffy does. Um, yeah, I was saying someone brings or the news. That could be interesting if, if Morgan's is the one that shows up there and is like, hey, I got some big news, boys. Get ready, boys. That would be interesting, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be big news. Um... He may have something to do with that, but it would be interesting to bring big news into this because the news is so big that's something he wants to announce himself. So that's a good point. Citrin says, I've been waiting years for this arc. Time to hopefully get some answers for our theories. My expectations for this arc include Dragon, Kuzan somehow being brought up. Uh, Kobe, Dr. Korea, I mentioned the Will of D. Maybe she herself is a D. Cobra getting the kill him treatment. Rebecca and Vivi talking about Luffy's telling doing some shit, etc. I'm more hyped for this arc than I am for Wano, in my opinion. Citrin, I'm equally as hyped for Reverie and Wano for different reasons. Action for Wano information for reverie so i agree with you um i didn't think about kuzan and kobe um kobe could definitely be there kobe's one that could definitely be at the reverie based on um i think it's time for him to show up again aokiji yes because aokiji's doing some shady things from their perspective or he could be on the cover that could be revealed that he's actually working with them to kind of you know stave off blackbeard or to infiltrate blackbeard somehow but those are some interesting observations i, I like it so these are the final two questions that i wanted to answer but they're from grand patrol ski and RC. So first, Grand, Grand Petrolski says, about the last re the reverie that everyone's always talking about before this one, I believe a lot of people are confused on this subject. I don't believe we saw the reverie before this one. I could be wrong, but I'll tell you why I think this. Reverie happens every four years, right? So with a two-year time skip in mind, the last one was two years before Luffy jumps out of the barrel and meets Kobe, okay? I'm assuming people are referring to the reverie that Vivi was at. That's what they're talking about. Where they talked about Dragon. Notice how young Vivi is at this time. Much more than two years younger than when we met her. So I believe this reverie was actually 10 years before by the time of Luffy Ace Flash Sabo flashback when the world government said Dragon would be a problem in the future. Now it is the future and Dragon will be a problem. I think he already is a problem. Um, if that makes sense, I hope it clears up any confusion. Again, I could be wrong and those are different reverie flashbacks. No, you're right. The reverie flashback that we see where Vivi's really young um, is saying Dragon's going to be a problem. We didn't see the one in between. We didn't see that one. Um, because of course, uh, I think Vivi was 10 at the time. I don't, I don't know her age at the time, but yeah, you're, you're right with that statement and that assessment, but I'm not sure who was getting that confused though, but you're right. I, I, I appreciate you clearing that up. RC, he says, few things, love the intro. And now let's get political long time reader since 2001. And the weight of this next arc should warrant it being called Atlas. It carries world, um, not to take from revolutionaries, but the sheer number of countries the Straw Hats influence plus the underwhelming Marine forces will instill doubt about the world government and their prowess and the scope of entire Grand Line. Um, the cards will shuffle, um, and that's all I want to stress. I sincerely hope we flush out all of the conflicts before the craziness happens. I suspect Reverie will end with a cliffhanger, same as Chapter 900, except we will not know the fate of this chaotic Reverie ending. Just the impression that the powers are now the divided, meaning the Straw Hats friends slash harem, <laughs> lol, will be ostracized when the political atmosphere goes, gets too rowdy, Boom, revolutionaries will save them and split the world more evenly, tilting the world government and marines to focus to policing rebellion versus chasing novas, leading them to develop and get closer to great war. Side note, I tend to lead towards a Kaido arc similar to where Whole Cake Island with Kaido retreating and regrouping. People tend to believe he is based on Wano. I suspect it's just another island in his spectrum of control. Maybe Reverie will help define the geography of who controls and what questions. Amazing comment. I absolutely love this comment. Um, a few things. I like the idea that they have a conflict and the world, the revolutionaries take the people that are for them or for change and go away with them. And then they have a actual civil war where they're actually going against the countries that are part of the world government that have been abducted by the revolutionaries. As far as the Kaido arc, um, I think that could be a situation in which Kaido goes down. I think it's perfect for him to go down because of the liberation of Wano. Of course, Kaido does not have to die or go down for Wano to be liberated. I mean, he's just occupying Wano right now with the Shogun. So that's one of his favorite islands that, that doesn't have to be his base. 
So he doesn't have to go down there, but it'd be interesting if he does go down, um, if all of his commanders are there, if he does go down. It'd be interesting. I think that would be the start and the kickoff for the um, the Yonko saga, like a true kickoff. Of course, we got an introduction to Big Mom in Whole Cake. Um, for Kaido going down, it's the first Yonko going down with all the supernovas being there, or most of them actually. That would be a great way to, um, to kind of start the great... <sighs> Shit, excuse me. To start the great war. Um, and if Kaido, he wants to start a great war, so I would anticipate that he wants to participate in it as well. So even if he's not a Yonko anymore, he goes down, he can still participate. Just He's, he's not going to die. We can say that. He's not going to die. I don't think he's going to die. Whew! That was a mouthful. Um, you talked about it a lot. So guys, let me know your thoughts. I really want to know your thoughts about this. Um, it's a lot of information in this video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And leave your thoughts below. If there's something I was incorrect about, definitely correct me. Um, let me, if you're, if you're, if you're here for the first time, like the video, subscribe, even if you're not here for the first time, like the video and you, you can't subscribe again, but if like the video, if you're here for the first time, make sure you subscribe, give your thoughts below. I always appreciate that. And be sure to check out my boy Trent's, uh, shirts. This is a fucking dope ass shirt. It's super comfortable, right? Super comfortable. And again, his links to all the merch and his channel and his Twitter will be down in the description box down below. Shout out to my boy. I appreciate this. This was something that was super unexpected, but I appreciate it. Um, but again, like the video, subscribe. We are in the era of smiles, so we are lit, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.